Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Vivian from the Paper Letter blog, also known as the Chatty Pen Pal channel. And today I have a super fun tutorial for you. As you can see, this video is quite long. So what I suggest you do is either watch it in parts or simply watch the parts you like. Because this video starts with a real time tutorial on how to make the outside of the flipbook as well as the inside, which may not be that interesting for all of you. But the second half of this video is the, the decorating of the pages and including all the goodies and doing all of those fun things. So if you don't like this real time tutorial, don't worry, you can skip to the decorating, which is in all honesty, my favorite part. Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Vivian from the Paper Letter blog, also known as the Chatty Pen Pal channel. And today we're going to repurpose um, a packaging, paper packaging box to make a fun pen pal meal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this box into something like this. And then I'm going to fill the inside as if it were a flip book. So I'm going to put envelopes in there, fun little collages and other things that I will show you. The reason why I'm doing this is because I have a Patreon account. And on that Patreon account, we do a monthly challenge. This month's challenge is to repurpose or to upcycle or to do something cool with something that you would normally throw away. And uh, paper packaging is definitely one of the easiest things you can repurpose because it's sturdy, it's the perfect base for a flip book or a journal or anything like that. And it's something you would usually have laying around. In August 2019, I made this box. I made this booklet out of a pizza box. This is a frozen pizza box. So you want to see how I made my first pages, including this fun little picture and information fold out. Um, I will link that down below. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you how to make something similar, but instead of it being a junk journal, we're going to turn it into a pen pal happy mail. So I'm going to include spots for a letter. I'm going to include envelopes. I'm going to include collages, and it's going to be one fun little flip book. But I did want to show you this to show you that basically you can do any size. First thing we're going to do is <laughs> this. It's super simple. Um, we only need side one, the spine, and side two, so front, spine, and back. So we're going to cut off everything else that we do not need. Then, as you can see, we are uh, left with a cute little booklet. It's not perfect and it's maybe a little bit wonky, but we're going to fix all of that in this process. So don't you worry about that. Um, I Don't you worry about that. You could even flip it inside out if that works better for you. I might actually do that myself, but we'll figure that out later. I actually want to do something different and that is decoupage. If you're not interested in decoupage, don't worry, we're still going to do the whole tutorial and everything, but um, that is going to be after this. So you can also skip the decoupaging part if you like. So with over four hours of uh, crafting videos, I need to speed this up quite a bit, 40 times to be exact. But what I did is I created a base layer of uh, white paint, acrylic paint. I did that a couple times and I dried that in between to make sure that you couldn't see the packaging anymore or at least not that clearly. And then I'm using a pretty napkin that I got from the receiver of this lip book and uh, together with some uh, watered down glue to do the actual decoupaging. Okay, once it has dried, we've got quite a nice and sturdy cover as you can see. You can also still see that it's hand painted underneath, but you cannot see the packaging anymore. And I'm quite pleased. Now, the inside is pretty ugly, as you can see. So what we are going to do is we're going to cover this up. And I think it will look really, really nice if we use craft paper. If you cannot find craft paper, go to Ikea because they've got big rolls at the gift wrap section for just a couple, for a really, really low amount. So <laughs> I'm going to use that today. And the reason why I also liked using this craft paper for this particular inside cover is because it's so thin, it folds easily. Because if you would have used cardstock or something else that's thicker, I'm afraid it would be quite difficult to still uh, fold the flip book. So 
that is why. But I, as I said, I'm not uh, the best person to instruct you all about that. I'm just instructing you about this particular project. I'm trimming off the excess and I'm going to start making my pages, which is super fun. You can just go through your stash, pick sort of all sorts of papers that you like, handmade papers, vintage papers, new papers, magazine papers, it does not matter at all. Now I would recommend using a page that you can fold in half like a mini booklet and then stick that inside, but I'm making it difficult. These two pages I loved so much, but I wanted them to be in different order. So, And I also wanted um, to cut out some of the white space, so I made it difficult for myself and I trimmed the pages in half and then I stuck them back together with some excess craft paper. The only reason why I did that is because I wanted to cut off some extra white if that makes sense so now i'm going through a stack of magazine pages i used a lot of flow magazine um, pages both thinner pages as well as sturdy cover pages <clears throat> i'm using all sorts of things like that and i also used some pages that may not be that pretty on one side but they're pretty on the other side so i just decided to cover that up later this is going quite fast because like i said four hours of video footage i had to somehow trim down to around half an hour but once we are done with the paper selecting process it's gonna go mm, at a speed that will be more easy to follow also if you're wondering what you're looking at in the top corner that's my ipad i'm currently watching a show i don't remember what i was watching but i was watching something so what I did first is I uh, simply cut a whole bunch of papers down to, I don't remember, I was basically eyeballing it somewhat the same size. And then after that I started making three little booklets of four pages. So what I did is I used some sturdier paper on the outside of the booklet and then um, on the inside I would have some thinner paper so that it would feel and look and flip like three sort of chapters. I really hope that makes sense. Again, I'm not the best person to do the f junk journaling tutorial, but I'm just trying to take you through my process. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. What I'm doing here is I'm actually creating the little chapters. Um, so what I did is I have two pages folded in half and then I stick them together so it's four pages in total once it's inside the flipbook. I sort of eyeballed a nice measurement but then I thought it would be easier to use a ruler so again this is very very intuitively um, I do not I don't know about certain measurements but what I did is I created a roster as you can see created a roster and then I punched holes on the uh, points where the rosters would cross so that it would hopefully be somewhat correct measurements okay and then what you do is you also punch the same holes the same width into the chapters or the inserts or however you want to call it and then you um, sew that into the flip book and then this is what it looks like once you've done I am not the right person to explain how you do this, but there's a ton of bookbinding tutorials over on YouTube as well as a junk journal making tutorials. But basically what I'm showing you here is the three little chapters. This is the first chapter. That's the last page. This is the first chapter, the first page of the new chapter. There's again four pages on the inside. One, two three and four and then this is the first page of the third chapter second page third page fourth page so as you can see the first and last page of each chapter are a little bit sturdier a little bit thicker paper and then the inside pages are thinner and i i really that i did not do that on purpose but then i realized that I had two types of paper, thinner and thicker, and I realized I could turn that into cute little mini booklets inside a booklet, if that makes any sense at all. If this doesn't make sense to you, I recommend um, really taking a close look at the video because I think, I hope at least, that it's kind of self-explanatory. 
Now we are on to the best part, which is the decorating. Um, the first page, I liked that so much. It's again a Flow magazine page. Um, and I did not want to cover that up too much. So on the first page, what I did now at this very moment is I only put a piece of vintage paper to cover up a small part of the cover. But I'm going to add some things to that later, but I did not want to overdo it and I didn't have any good ideas at that time. So I figured I would just leave it for later. And then on the first page, I immediately stuck in some stickers so that you open the flipbook and bam, you immediately find some goodies. These are really pretty washi tape like stickers that I got off of AliExpress. And all I did is I created a little belly band with craft paper. I decorated the page with some washi tape on the side and I wrote stickers for you. Okay, I was editing this video when I realized a part of the video is missing. Sad. Um, a very big reason why I've been saving YouTube and Patreon income for a new camera. Because the, the video is just completely over overwritten. So it's just gone, gone. Anyway, the missing footage is of me sticking in a tea bag, so that's not that difficult. I wrote a sort of poetry page saying, let the flowers remind us why the rain was necessary, as well as um, my favorite poem by Erin Hansen. I wrote it over two pages, so the first half is on the page before this, and then that was the second half. I know I didn't show it full in ca on camera in full, but I will read it to you now. <clears throat> I've never done poetry in my videos, but this this is my favorite poem and I think you will know why Life is unpredictable. It changes with the seasons Even your coldest winter happens for the best of reasons and though it feels eternal like all you will ever do is freeze I promise spring is coming and with it brand new leaves and the reason why I love this poem so much is because, of course, I've told you often about my anxiety and about my struggles and about my not feeling well and large parts of my life have felt like things were never going to get better, as dramatic as that sounds. And this is kind of a, a written reminder that uh, better times are coming, even though it may feel like winter is, <laughs> will last forever. So. A little bit of a, a little bit of that <laughs> for you in this video. What I did in the meantime, I'm realizing now more of the footage is missing. <clears throat> but I made a little baggie of all the green stamps. I found all sorts of vintage and new green stamps, and I put them in that baggie to match the flip book, which is quite green, <laughs> vintage botanical green. And then what I also did is I made some sort of a ribbon belly band ish with a brand to hold the flip book together. The only thing is I made this before the flip book was finished and it turned out so bulky that the belly band is a bit on the, s in, on the small and tight size side. But yeah, <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Um, so I'm decorating in between. I put the stamps, the vintage stamps into a vellum goodie bag and I put that on the page with a, a butterfly paper clip, which is absolutely gorgeous. I got that in a paper gang box quite a while ago uh, and I thought that matched quite nicely. So what I'm doing other than that is decorating, decorating, decorating. I made a whole bunch of collages and little page decorations. I am not working chrono chronologically not working chronologically at all what I did on camera as well as off camera because I did a lot of the thinking for this video off camera believe it or not uh, is flip through the flip book look at my supplies and work on whatever sparked my interest so whichever page I thought hey I've got an idea I would work on next and that is such a freeing process uh, and <laughs> just do working on whichever page you like most so this is a stamp that I got, stamp that came out weird, stamp that I got off of AliExpress. I don't know what they're called. It's a cling something stamp. I don't know. Um, it's very pretty. I've been using a whole lot of my stamps lately. I have a whole bunch of clear stamps, which I barely reach for. They're all in a drawer that I do not open often enough, but I also have a ton of wooden stamps that I love using. So you'll see me use those quite a bit as well.
Sage has arrived on my craft table. So if you hear anything falling over, it's a cat. <laughs> um, what I'm doing is creating a washi tape sample. I have a large vintage botanical uh, washi tape that I wanted to share a sample with. So I'm rolling that onto um, some of that magazine paper, the light blue lemon magazine paper. And I'm using a corner punch to make it rounded. And then I'm going to stick that onto the page using a brand. So at first I thought paper clip. I thought gluing it down I don't know and then I thought bread and I was like yes that's gonna be it the only difficult thing oh the breads are from action by the way the local dollar store the only difficult thing is of course with the bread you're going to see the bread on the other side of the page as well so I'm just using some paper punches to cover that up I mean I really like the way this looks I need to do this more often so I'm taking a mental note in my ideas book <laughs> to uh, use a bread for sticking down goodies more often. So this page is one of my favorite pages, uh, if I'm fairly honest, with the washi tape on one side and then the collage on the other side. And the collage is made with a stamp, of course, in the middle, a vintage looking light pink ticket that I tore in half, as well as a, web, a lot of little scraps of vintage book pages and of course the washi tape samples and the paper punches that I punched. I will show you everything up close at the end of this video, don't you worry. What you saw me do just before is pu um, punch, stamp a whole lot of these images from my new uh, lovely looking stamps onto vintage paper. I'm uh, in black, gray and green and I'm going to cut them out there you go, close up for you. I'm going to cut them out and use them as goodies so that the receiver can use these for collaging or decorating or whatever. I don't think I've told you yet over here on YouTube, but over on Patreon, if you don't know what Patreon is, everything, links to everything are down below. But over on my Patreon, we have a monthly craft club challenge and this month it's collaging so um, <laughs> you're going to see a whole lot of collaging um, uh, in my videos and on Instagram this month because I'm of course joining this challenge myself as well what I did there with all of the clothes pins is I made a little pocket I basically glued a pocket onto the page and then I used clothes pins to hold that in place while it dried I'm now gonna make wax seals with while watching Avatar <laughs> in the background, as you can see. Um, I'm making wax seals and this is going quite fast, even the pouring and even the showing of the wax seals, but that is because, once again, I'm going to say it, this video was super duper long and um, I do, I, it, there's not enough time to show everything in detail, but if you enjoy wax, wax, <laughs> if you enjoy watching wax seal videos, making wax seals, uh, slow motions, um, up close, and all of the end results, then I definitely recommend you check out some of my wax sealing videos because I have a ton of these over on my channel. So uh, this is just to show you that I'm making wax seals and then I'm going to include them for goodies and just to give you an idea but like i said if you want more up close and better looks then i have videos of this on, on my channel okay while we're watching this let me tell you a little bit about the receiver of this flipbook because i was working on this and i used a um nap that napkin with the bees on it that i received from jackie and then i picked her name out of the to reply pile and i was like this is meant to be so i actually made the flipbook for her in the end I mean, I, I knew this kind of like halfway through and it felt almost meant to be because um, I picked her letter from the pile when I was working on the flipbook made with a napkin that she sent me in her style because she does a lot of vintage, also vintage botanicals and it just felt like I had to send it to her. The only thing that was different in the end from this video that I made um, with the um box the flip book that i sent her is <laughs> i cannot talk i'm tired but at the end of this video i'm going to include a 
her tag that she made in this slipbook and then I thought it would be a little bit rude to send her her own tag again so instead of the tag I ended up sending her a, a little baggie of some clear stickers instead so that's the only thing I changed but I don't know I just smiled so much especially because I shared some sneak peeks of this uh, flip book on Instagram and she was she sent me messages like oh it's so pretty and then in the end I of course knew it was gonna go to her so I had a, a lot of fun knowing that um, she would like it so much so that was a nice a nice happy meal to send out um, but yeah that's just a little bit of side information creating a whole lot of work wax seals that I'm going to stick onto the page with some double-sided tape so that she can carefully peel them off which may be a little bit difficult but she can peel them off if she wants and then reuse them but at the same time they double as decorations which I love on the left page I'm working on another collage I'm on a roll with collages I have to admit so the leftover of that pink ticket I already had some craft paper on that page because that was used to cover up some magazine uh, magazine writing like a magazine article I covered that up with the craft paper at the beginning and then I'm using a little piece of vintage book as well as one of my new stamps which has like a, a floral circle and then the next thing I'm gonna do is stick down another washi tape sticker because I am obsessed with them and this one has all sorts of butterflies on it. And then I'm doodling onto the page, which I quite like to do, and I'm also using another paper punch to make some flowers out of that vintage book page. I quite like it, I hope you do too. I always talk you through my process and I know sometimes it can be a lot to listen to but I always hope that it gives you some ideas of your own. I personally um, learn or I, I get a lot more ideas from hearing things over just seeing them so I'm hoping that talking out loud will sort of plant a seed into your brain that you can use as crafting inspiration at a later stage. That sounds super weird okay but I hope it helps. The next page we're working on is a butterfly page. This is a page idea that I already came up with off camera. So I also want to include that for you. It's not like I'm going super fast because I have such good ideas, but I already thought of what I wanted to do. I just didn't know which butterflies I was gonna use. And I used these beautiful butterfly die cuts that I received in PO Books Mail. Uh, it's a layered butterfly and of course, I wanted to turn them into some embellishments so I wrote on that craft paper a butterfly embellishments and then I'm also going to add a ton of smaller butterflies to kind of fill up the page because although I did come up with the general idea for this page off camera I did not know exactly what I was gonna do so this is going to be me finishing an idea that I started off camera I want to include that because Sometimes when I look at Instagram, I go depressed over how fast some people can create a beautiful spread. And then I asked someone about it once and she said that she actually planned the entire spread. This is about a journal spread. She said that she planned the entire spread beforehand. So she already knew what it was going to look like. She just had to film it and that made me feel a lot better about myself. So I'm also going to tell you that. Um, no, I'm not like super fast. <laughs> I, uh, I do that quite often, just um, sort of mapping out an idea before I actually glue it down. The only difference with me is that I will map out something and then I will start filming it and then I will forget what I did. <laughs> so it will look completely different anyhow. But yeah. Here is a little look at how it looks so far. I also filmed a flip through of the flipbook in good lighting with a clean background so that you can see it, but that will be at the end of this video, of course. 
I also want to know from you, of course at the beginning of this video I said that you can skip the part of the tutorial or you can watch this video in multiple parts. I want to know from you what kind of viewer you are because in all honesty I'm the type of viewer to put on a video in the background and then forget to watch and I will also quite often skip to parts that I find interesting so I want to know from you are you someone who will watch a video in one go or in multiple goes or will you watch small parts of a video or will you only watch the end of a video I've done that <laughs> like I want to see how they made something but I'm, I'm I mean I, I'm I want to see how something ends up but I'm too lazy to watch the whole video then I'll just watch the end let me know in a comment down below um, next thing I'm doing is I have this little craft paper envelope that I got from Linda and I'm trimming a piece of paper the size of that envelope so that it will fit in there and that was supposed to be my letter but then when I start I wanted to start writing I knew that it was going to be way too long so instead I just left that page over there blank so that the receiver uh, Jackie can reuse that if she wants and then I wrote my letter on a separate page and then these are some of the clear stickers that I was talking about before they are also from Aliexpress and they are um, eucalyptus leaves which I find very pretty and I also I, um, I got that craft paper envelope from Linda and she stamped the images on that but I actually trimmed the flap off so that it would be just a pocket instead of an envelope I thought that would be better because it the paper was quite thick and then for a flip book that was already becoming quite bulky I thought it would be better just to <laughs> trim off everything that was not extremely necessary <laughs> next thing I'm doing is I'm creating a side flap a side flap side pocket I don't know just to tore a piece of paper from that green paper so that you would have the pretty uh, torn paper look and then I'm gonna stick a whole bunch of tickets in there I love tickets that's the tag I was talking about I stick that down here but I'm actually gonna end up um, sticking something else in there because she's the one who sent it to me but because this was also made with the same B napkins I thought it would be a nice match <laughs> And all of the stickers are also from Aliexpress. After I finished this video, I also got a couple of real vintage tickets. A real vintage bus tickets. I'm so excited. I find it a little bit hard to use them because they're so precious and vintage and pretty. But um, I, I really like them, so I will start using them soon. So now that we're done, this was super, a super long video. Thank you so much if you made it all the way through. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Links to everything are in the description box as well. So my Instagram, my Patreon, my blog, whatever else you might find interesting. A big, big thank you to my patrons as well, of course, first of all, for inspiring me to do this video. Um, I've been wanting to do Vintage Botanicals ever since I did a poll over <laughs> there, but also for the general support and the fun live streams and chats. So, thank you. Also to everyone who is not on Patreon, thank you for being my supporter and I will see you again very soon. You may have noticed that my videos have gone a little bit irregular. Um, that's just because I'm taking some more time for myself. But I'm not gone. No, I'm not gone. I will talk to you again soon. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.